let's now write down, let's look at a let's look at four grid blocks. And we'll call them one, two, three. Now let's write out the spatial discretization. Right? So each of those grid blocks have an equation. Right? So remember, what we wrote on the previous slide was for the ith grid block. So that means the ith means any of them. Right? So it could be any of them. I can just index i to whatever I want, and it can be the ith grid block. So each of those grid blocks have an equation associated with it. So let's now write down the equation associated with the one, two, three, and four grid blocks. Okay? And, and we'll just do it now um, for any n time. Right? There's one equation. So there's the four equations at any end time. But does anybody notice something <laughs> funny about those equations? Yeah. The first equation needs P0, and the last equation needs P5. Now, again, I just, the, the 0 and the 5 just arise because I'm plugging in 1 into, for i, right? And then it's just evaluating the index. So because this is i minus 1, and if one, if i is one, then you get zero. Right? And this is i plus one, and if i is four, then I get five. But those grid blocks don't exist in the simulation. Okay. So this is where our boundary conditions come into play. So what we'll do, we'll look at the two types of boundary conditions we deal with. Uh, they're called Dirichlet boundary conditions and Neumann <laughs> boundary conditions. Right? And th th those names really come from the mathematics community, but you can just, if you can just remember, maybe I'll even write it down. In this context, <coughs> Dirichlet 
in the context of single phase flow, the, you know, single phase diffusivity equation, this means constant pressure. To D, Dirichlet. Neumann boundary conditions are flux boundary conditions, so that's either constant or no flux. So in, in the, our context, along the boundary, it's usually no flux. Right? We usually, I mean, the, the normal boundary condition for a reservoir is that it's sealed. There's no flow out of it. So normally we, we have no flow boundary conditions around the outside. Okay. But but we'll learn a general case. I mean you could you could potentially say have an aquifer or something feeding the reservoir on one side. So the fir first we'll, we'll we'll on this on this problem for this example we'll assume <coughs> that there's a Dirichlet condition here where the pressure on the boundary is equal to PB, okay? And then here, we'll assume for now, we'll assume no flow, no flux, okay, for this example. So remember our pressure, like the pressure in grid block one is evaluated at the center of grid block one. So one thing we could do is we could just say that grid block one, since it's only on the left edge, right, that grid block one just takes on PB, right, the value, the constant pressure value. And then you could just also assign it to grid block zero right there. And you know, remember these these uh, discretizations are only accurate when delta x is really small. I mean, they only they approach. I would say they're accurate, but they approach the exact solution as delta x goes to zero. So, if I have a tiny, you know, if I have the grid block in the center, as the grid block goes to zero, the center and the edge get closer to one another, and the error diminishes because you do that. Right? But we can actually come up with a better approximation by you're basically averaging the pressure in the, the in grid block zero, which really doesn't exist, right? We just sort of put it there in a fakely for now, in grid block one. And so let's just average the pressure and say that the average pressure between the two is equal to PB, right? So if we do that, so we just say P0 plus B1 over two, <laughs> is equal to PB, right? And then we solve this for, <coughs> we solve this for P0. We get that. Right? And then now we can plug this back into that equation. Right? So. So then, you see I have minus P1N minus 2P1N. So that's really minus 3P1N. So that is constant pressure boundary condition on the left. Now let's look at this no, no flow on the right. 
see if we can come up with something, a way to do something about that fifth grid block. So so this was for constant pressure on the left boundary. Here we'll say no flux on right boundary. And remember, Darcy's law, something like this, right? is that, not something like this, it is that. And so there's no flux, there's no there's no velocity, right? So this is equal to zero. Well, k and mu are material properties, non-zero material properties, as long as there is some permeability. I mean, I, I, mean, I guess technically k could be zero, but we're, we're assuming we're talking about flow in a porous media, so k is not zero. The viscosity of a fluid is not zero. So if this is zero, then it implies that the pressure gradient is zero. So the pressure gradient zero, we can use we can use um, a forward difference approximation to the pressure gradient. That's equal to zero, right? So the, this guy's equal to zero, so then I'm just using a forward difference approximation to it. And that's equal to zero. So what does that imply? About P5. It's equal to P4. So then, I can replace that. And of course, then I can simplify this too, right? Then that's just minus 2p4 plus p4 is just p4. But now, I can actually solve these equations because I know everything because I've applied the boundary conditions. So I can just evaluate that. You know, and then you do it in time also. So now we just do what we did on the slide before. We assign uh, you know, the n, the value of 0. Then the whole right-hand side just becomes things that are known at the beginning, initial conditions and boundary conditions. And then we can solve these equations. So sometimes this uh, this sort of no f no flux boundary condition is called a reflection boundary condition. Right? So essentially, you're reflecting the pressure in four onto this fake grid block five, and then P four equals to P five. Do what? Yeah. Well, it, it's not the power of n. That's not that's not a that's not a power. That's a. You would be right if it's a power, but it's just a superscript. It's just a superscript. Yeah. Yeah, that's 
Thankfully, uh, well, for the most part in this class, we're, we're only going to deal with linear equations, and so nothing's actually raised to any power. Okay, so if you see a superscript, it's a. Uh, yeah. But but later in the class, there will be there is nonlinear equations. I'll have to be careful about the notation there. Okay, so that's the explicit method. Let's look at the...